to Donald Trump consistently over four years. But he knew that he had a higher duty to the United States Constitution. This is testimony from the Vice President's Chief of Staff. So I think the Vice President was proud of uh, his four years of service, and he felt like much had been accomplished in those four years. And I think he was proud to have uh, stood beside the President for all that had been done. But I think he ultimately knew that his fidelity to the Constitution was his first and foremost oath. And, um, and that's, that's what he articulated publicly, and I think that that's what he felt. His fidelity to the Constitution was more important than his fidelity to President Trump and his desire. The oath he took. Yeah. Yes. You'll also hear about a lawyer named John Eastman. Mr. Eastman was deeply involved in President Trump's plans. You'll hear from former Fourth Circuit federal judge Michael Ludig, a highly respected leading conservative judge. John Eastman clerked for Judge Ludig. Judge Ludig provided counsel to the vice president's team in the days before January 6th. The judge will explain how Eastman, quote, was wrong at every turn. And you will see the email exchanges between Eastman and the vice president's counsel as the violent attack on Congress was underway. Mr. Jacob said this to Mr. Eastman, thanks to your bullshit, we are under siege. You will also see evidence that John Eastman did not actually believe the legal position he was taking. In fact, a month before the 2020 election, Eastman took exactly the opposite view on the same legal issues. In the course of the Select Committee's work to obtain information from Mr. Eastman, we have had occasion to present evidence to a federal judge. The judge evaluated the facts, and he reached the conclusion that President Trump's efforts to pressure Vice President Pence to act illegally by refusing to count electoral votes likely violated two federal criminal statutes. And the judge also said this. If Dr. Eastman and President Trump's plan had worked, it would have permanently ended the peaceful transition of power, undermining American democracy and the Constitution. If the country does not commit to investigating and pursuing accountability for those responsible, the court fears January 6th will repeat itself. Every American should read what this federal judge has written. The same judge, Judge Carter, issued another decision on Tuesday night, just this week, indicating that John Eastman and other Trump lawyers knew that their legal arguments had no real chance of success in court, but they relied on those arguments anyway to try to, quote, overturn a Democratic election. And you will hear that while Congress was under attack on January 6th and the hours following the violence, the Trump legal team in the Willard Hotel war room continued to work to halt the count of electoral votes. In our fifth hearing, you will see evidence that President Trump corruptly pressured state legislators and election officials to change election results. You will hear additional details about President Trump's call to Georgia officials, urging them to, quote, find 11,780 votes, votes that did not exist, and his efforts to get states to rescind certified electoral slates without factual basis and contrary to law. You will hear new details about the Trump campaign and other Trump associates' efforts to instruct Republican officials in multiple states to create intentionally false electoral slates and transmit those slates to Congress, to the Vice President and the National Archives, falsely certifying that Trump won states he actually lost. In our final two June hearings, you will hear how President Trump summoned a violent mob and directed them illegally to march on the United States Capitol. While the violence was underway, President Trump failed to take immediate action to stop the violence and instruct his supporters to leave the Capitol. As we present these initial findings, keep two points in mind. First, our investigation is still ongoing, so what we make public here will not be the complete set of information we will ultimately disclose. And second, the Department of Justice is currently working with cooperating witnesses and has disclosed to date only some of the information it has identified from encrypted communications and other sources. On December 18, 2020, 
a group including General Michael Flynn, Sidney Powell, Rudy Giuliani, and others visited the White House. They stayed late into the evening. We know that the group discussed a number of dramatic steps, including having the military seize voting machines and potentially rerun elections. You will also hear that President Trump met with that group alone for a period of time before White House lawyers and other staff discovered the group was there and rushed to intervene. A little more than an hour after Ms. Powell, Mr. Giuliani, General Flynn, and the others finally left the White House, President Trump sent 